An irregular migrant is somebody who is not from a European member state, who lives in a European country without the right to stay. A common misconception is that all irregular migrants come by boats or sneak across borders. But in fact, there are a number of irregular migrants in Europe who arrive with a regular visa and then for differing reasons lose their right to stay or have applied for asylum unsuccessfully. Many cities across Europe recognize that irregular migrants are a part of their population who have the same needs as everyone else. So instead of ignoring them or leaving it to national governments, these cities have worked to include them in basic services. In this film, we will explore how cities have achieved this and why they believe it is important. This is the, the building that uh, I once started everything from. I used to live on the fourth floor, a very interesting place, and uh, it was very helpful. An irregular migrant can be anybody. It could be a young boy, it could be a girl, it could be an older woman, it could be an old man. What's common with them is that they don't have any right to any kind of services that normal people would have in a country where they live. Sometimes they are even what we call unreturnables. It means they're not allowed to stay in the country where they are, but they are also not in a position where they can return to the country where they came from. It is always heard that irregular migrants should not be here, so we should not uh, do anything to help them stay here or to access service or, you know, that providing services uh, is a pull factor for irregular migrants to come. The truth is that irregular migrants are a reality, so local municipalities have to do something about it. But they are often lost in the lack of national or European guidance telling them what to do. Here's the, the main entrance and um, here was my, my door. And uh, we was living here uh, one, two, three, three families. Here's the, uh, the living room. Before I was given this opportunity to start living my, myself in here, I was living in a, in a shelter, like a refugee camp. And, uh, and later I was put out out of the central. That man. When they put it out, that means that your, your asylum procedure is over. And then I was living on the street. A migrant with an irregular status cannot work and is very often excluded for the provision of public services, which means that irregular migrants are often in a condition of destitution because they cannot officially gain an income and they cannot even be helped by local authorities or national authorities in receiving other kind of assistance. We are responsible for the whole of the, all of the population and undocumented people who live here are part of the population. Maybe not of the official population, they're part of the population. If we talk about undocumented people, we talk about maybe a Colombian women who came with a tourist visa and now is working night and day, cleaning or doing other things. We are not able as a city to regularize people, but we think on the territory of the city of Zurich, we want to have guarantees for really important human rights as education, health, access to justice. Cities have taken a number of initiatives in different areas, uh, including healthcare, education, shelters, crime prevention, that allow an easier interaction between public officials and migrants, and by doing so, their access to services uh, provided by local authorities. And in some cases, this is not just a way for cities to provide just a service to a migrant, but also it's a way to solve irregularity itself. In Amsterdam, we have about 180 nationalities, 1 million uh, citizens. We have also irregular uh, migrants, about 25,000. Long time ago, we discovered that we have a lot of crime in uh, those communities. Human trafficking, burglary, domestic violence. We didn't have an access for those people to the police. 
So it's about 10 years ago that we made the plan and a project for some police stations that they are open for those people who are victim of crime. And we tell them, if you come free, you tell the story, you go free out. So first we try to connect with NGOs, church organizations who were there before and help those people. And so we found a common ground to cooperate together. So actually the churches and the NGOs, they start talking with the uh, irregular migrants and uh, telling them, well, if you are facing a crime and you are a victim, we support you to go to the police and you don't have to be afraid. So we, first we start to build trust and then bits by bits people came to the police. Someday we saw also people coming from outside of Amsterdam, from Rotterdam, Den Haag, Utrecht, also to the Dutch Amsterdam police stations to report the crimes because they had no way else to go. So we thought, well, that can be a success. If someone is irregular immigrant in the Netherlands, that is formally administration law. It's not criminal law. So you have to choose which one do you want to enforce. Do you want to enforce the criminal law or do you want to enforce the administration law? But for us as a regular police, let I call that regular police, we want to tackle crime. We are, uh, some people call us crime fighters, and we want to help people. So if you are an, an irregular migrant and you are here in the Netherlands and you've been, been robbed, then I want to arrest the perpetrator. That's for me most important. Public order, public health, uh, crime prevention, uh, combating homelessness, these are all uh, negative social consequences that are uh, provoked by a condition of enduring uh, marginalization and legal limbo that cities need to address because in the proximity of the social challenges brought by the exclusion of a part of the population, cities see directly those problems and need to take action to solve them. Today, at this moment, we are on the highest number of uh, residents uh, with uh, uh, a different passport in the city of Barcelona in history. Most people arrive here in a, a irregular situation. Maybe they enter the European Union in, with a tourist visa, by plane usually, and they overstay with the objective to work uh, in, in Europe. So they don't return to the country of origin so they become irregular migrants. Our principle is that the, we have to act on delivering services and integration to all the people that is living in our city. So for us, uh, what the first thing we do is to, we foster the registration in the local, local registration, which is the Padron. One, once people is registered, they legally become uh, neighbors of the city. It is a legal status, local legal status, not state status. As neighbors, they are allowed to have access to local services. It can be a library, it can be social services, it can be a sport facility. But the main problem of the irregular migrants is regarding their legal situation. So they need legal advice on how to uh, find paths uh, to get uh, residence permits. Uh, the design of SIRE is in cooperation with the NGOs. We have a front office outsourced by the city, which is uh, composed by diverse staff with uh, capacity to speak three or four languages every person, uh, who identifies, they identify the needs and uh, demands of our citizens. It's uh, on the interest of everybody to have people that uh, speak the language of the city, the Catalan and the Spanish, or they have jobs that can contribute, pay their taxes, and be future citizens. We do it for all migrants, regular or irregular. Okay, uh, this is very important because 50% of the users who come to our service are uh, irregular migrants, but the other 50% are regular migrants who come for other, other needs. I'm working um, as a doctor for the health department 
of um, the city of Frankfurt and um, one of my tasks is to lead the humanitarian consultation hours and this is for more than 17 years a program to help irregular migrants and um, other people without health insurance with medical help. Frankfurt is no, more or less a very open-minded city and um, the slogan of the city is the city of diversity. From all centuries there is a huge number of migrants in the city. The estimated number is 20 to 40,000. All migrants, they cannot easily access our health system in Germany because um, you have to be registered and without a regular job you cannot get um, health insurance and, there, and without health insurance you cannot enter the health system, you cannot go to hospital. And there Therefore we have some patients we are treating now for over 10 years with diabetes, hypertension, HIV and tuberculosis which um, can also be spread all over the city of Frankfurt and therefore we focus also on these problems. We saw that the children are without the necessary vaccinations, which is um, really a big problem because um, like measles is um, still all over Europe and, and therefore we um, had them. We have once a week, we have a special consultation hour only for children. The irregular migrants we have come to us for many, many years because we also offer them anonymous help. Our fundamental aim is of course to give these people the medical help they need. And the doctor is the one who has always this all over the world, the special um, trust system with the patient. Uh, the municipality um, of Frankfurt, they are um, giving the money for our humanitarian medical help and um, we try to get into contact with also other agencies or private initiatives, but from the municipality they give help. Wenn wir erfolgreich Gesundheitsprävention äh, und aber auch Behandlung machen wollen, dann müssen wir, äh, dann dürfen wir nicht schauen, wie wünschen wir uns vielleicht irgendeine Stadt oder eine Gesellschaft oder sonst irgendwas. Sondern wir müssen die Menschen und die Gesellschaft so nehmen, wie sie ist. Dazu kommt äh, ein zweiter Aspekt und das ist die, Frage, die ethische Frage. Für mich ist es eine elementare Frage einer medizinischen Ethik, äh, dass wir Menschen dieses elementare Gesundheitsangebot äh, unterbreiten. Ik werk op een school met zeer veel kinderen in een kwetsbare situatie. En wij maken eigenlijk geen onderscheid tussen kinderen met of zonder papieren. Natuurlijk is dat onderscheid er wel en we zijn daar wel gevoelig voor. Maar in het beleid dat we hebben op school of de keuzes die we maken of de dingen die we aanbieden aan kinderen, um, zit er daar geen onderscheid in. Uh, bijvoorbeeld als er een nieuw kind bij ons op school komt, dan uh, praten wij met de ouders, praten wij met dat kindje en proberen wij in te schatten hoe dat een situatie is. Als dat kinderen zijn zonder hun papieren, dan uh, kijken van oké, okay, welke, welke actoren zitten er al rond jullie? Welke organisaties zijn er al bij jullie betrokken? Kunnen wij als school nog iets extra doen? Als ze geen papieren hebben, zitten ze al bij de, krijgen ze de juiste informatie? Hebben ze al de juiste partners? Weten ze naar welke organisaties dat ze moeten gaan? Um, hebben zij al hun basisvoorzieningen? Zijn die oké? Okay? Hebben ze een huis? Hebben ze eten? Hebben ze kleren? Hebben ze nog, nog juridische raad of, zo, of advies nodig? Of kunnen we ons focussen op het onderwijs en zorgen dat jullie, hier, dat jullie kind hier terecht kan, dat jullie kind hier kan leren? Het is gewoon heel belangrijk dat die kinderen deel uitmaken van hun klas en van de school, dat ze daar geen uitzonderingen zijn. Um, dat ze deel uitmaken van een groep zonder een stempel te krijgen van een kind zonder papieren. Gent zegt dat het een, kind, een kindvriendelijke stad is en ze tonen dat ook door zo'n maatregelen um, te bewerkstelligen. Well, het is inderdaad zo dat uh, mensen uh, uh, een aantal rechten hebben. Uh, namelijk uh, recht op onderwijs. Uh, uh, we gaan ook uh, de kinderen maximaal uh, toeleiden naar een school. De tijd dat ze hier uh, in Gent verblijven, dat wordt zeer goed op ingezet door diverse organisaties. Maar bovenop dat uh, hebben we als stad Gent er ook voor gekozen om bijvoorbeeld uh, de kinderen uh, ook een busypas te geven, uh, zodanig dat ze ook zich kunnen verplaatsen uh, met uh, het openbaar vervoer uh, naar de school. 
Daarnaast hebben we ook participeren, vrije tijd en hebben we ook een uitpas. En we staan die ook ter beschikking via die organisaties die die mensen begeleiden. En kinderen, als hier ook verblijven, maar ook de ouders, hopen dat die ook participeren aan het gemeenschapsleven. Dat ze ook vrije tijd kunnen genieten, dat ze kunnen deelnemen aan activiteiten. Dus hier in Gent hebben we echt een traditie om dingen samen te doen. Het zit echt in ons DNA om partners erbij te betrekken. Als lokale overheid kan je niet altijd bepaalde doelgroepen mensen bereiken. Terwijl de middenveldorganisatie dat dikwijls wel kan doen. En daarom vind ik het ook belangrijk om deze partners te ondersteunen. Als stad Gent doe je het maximale, je hebt ervaring, maar ik denk dat het heel belangrijk is, gezien ook de internationale en Europese context en vooral een stedelijke context, dat het goed is om goede praktijken uit te wisselen. Om te zeggen van kijk, zo pakken wij aan, zo hebben wij goede resultaten. Maar het is ook altijd interessant om te kijken hoe andere steden het aanpakken, om altijd ook uw eigen werking eigenlijk tegen de spiegel te houden en om nog betere resultaten te bereiken naar de toekomst toe. Utrecht calls himself a uh, human rights city. And human rights is not something only for national government or in international agencies, but it's also for local government has to look at human rights. In many municipalities in, in Holland, um, and Utrecht was, was one of the first, have the bed, bath, bread policy. That means we get undocumented migrants from the street and then give them guidance to work on a sustainable solution. We start up in uh, 2001 when there was a new policy, a new Dutch policy for irregular migrants. From that moment many people uh, became on the streets. From that moment we see the need that some shelter like us, we need to help these people and we started very small with just two houses and we took care for two families and the municipality in Utrecht they also saw the need of this and they became to support us and from that moment we grow and now we have 21 houses and we support around uh, 100 migrants. Nobody is trusting us immediately when they are coming in our shelter. We build it up, it, it costs time, it is his or her life and we want to help him or her but they have to do it themselves also. We have to cooperate together. The NGOs play a key part. Eh? They have uh, the trustworthy relationship with undocumented migrants. They trust them and they can talk to them on an equal way. But of course, the NGOs also have to be paid. We mostly work with professional social workers and with professional legal workers, because this is a real specific area and you need specialized workers to do to do this shop. And in our office we have a legal team who are we working together and every two weeks the people who are living in the shelter they're coming to our office. They are getting a kind of living allowance and that's also a moment to speak with their legal contact person. We have the, the counseling, we have the helping for looking to a perspective. So that's the reason why we have uh, people, new people coming in and people uh, getting out the houses and we give them a, a new step. We, we're taking them to a next step in their lives. So that's, that's part of our success. The streets are not a solution, but only give shelter is also not a solution. And only give legal support is also not a solution because somebody needs to get a shelter before he can think about his future and cooperate together. Every year, 60% of the people they are going out of the shelter with a kind of success. That can be that they have a regular status, that they have returned back, or that uh, they become again the right to stay in a national asylum seeker center. For the other people who don't get this solution, we talk of, of course about voluntary return. We get about 19% going back to their home country. So more than 90% we, we have a solution in our uh, policy, so only uh, less than 10% uh, we don't have a solution and we lose them to illegal stay. So we have a pragmatic, solution-oriented approach. There is a political framework. If you give them a house, they will stay here and you won't give them any perspective then here. But we think that if you give them a house, it's a starting point of the help, it's a starting point of the legal counselling, it's a starting point for uh, activation, it's a starting point for the new life, wherever the life is.
When I received my resident permit, that was like a start of a new beginning. I tried my best to have my own business. It was very kind of helpful because there was no way out, no way out. Three of us that uh, the organization also have, they have done a lot and they also have the permit today. I would like to ask my colleagues, do you know how many undocumented people you have for, around you or in your city? If you cannot give a number or a figure, then you have to ask yourself a question, do I miss something? I think yes, you miss something. If you have crime in your country and, and the number of those people in your society is not willing to talk with you because they are afraid, is that what you want? If the answer is yes, well, let it be. If you say, well, I want to connect with society, then you have to connect with all of them. Uh, countries are blocked and there's no legal way to enter. But this is a paradox. This block generates irregularity because the markets, they need migrants, they need uh, workers, they need people. So at the end, uh, they find a way to hire people in an informal way. So this is not good. What's important is that people are getting the, the basic needs like shelter, food, clothing. But you have to combine it with, with support, with legal support, with guidance, because otherwise there's still no solution. So don't look anymore to our uh, political ambitions, don't look anymore to our political backgrounds, but just look forward to the things that works. And if you have an approach that is effective, uh, whatever political situation there is, and you can sell it. Our idea is that the people who are arriving now, that maybe are in a very weak situation, someday they will be citizens. So uh, we want to help and accelerate the process as soon as possible. Otherwise, we also have the risk of creating segregation, creating uh, conflicts, creating inequity, creating the future of problems in the day-to-day -day life. Our experience is that the irregular today is the future regular, tomorrow. So as soon as we act, as soon as we react, it's better for all.